folks, welcome in. Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV. We're taking the studio outdoors. Thought, uh, what a better way to uh, thank one of our great sponsors of Seven Rivers Racing here on KQEG TV outside the Home and American Legion, as they have sponsored us now for three years consecutive. And uh, we greatly appreciate that. And uh, we would encourage you to come out. They've got a lot of menu and dinner specials all the way through the week and some great uh, people that come out here. You can hear some great stories from some of the folks that live in Holman and live in the entire region. And that's true. And behind the camera, for those of you that don't know, there is a beautiful park here. Great place to come and have a picnic, a nice little stream over there. I know our buddy here would love to go for a picnic. <laughs> Peter wants a picnic and Stewie wants a picnic. And I'm not sure who's going to be in that one. You see the three cars behind us uh, here in a moment, uh, our guests on the program today. First time we've had a chance to get all three of them uh, on the program. You know, something we like to do at the Lacrosse Speedway is we like to talk about a lot of the racing families that are out there. We've got uh, a good handful. Uh, Eckelbergs have four. Uh, Carlson's have a couple. Um, so we thought we would have a chance to bring on three of the, um, um, what is it called this year? Roosh Swenson Motorsports, formerly the Diamond S Racing Entourage. And that would be uh, Steve Roosh and <laughs> Kyle Swenson. <laughs> And Melissa Roosh, all three are going to join us here on the program today. And as we do each and every weekend, before we get those guys on, you can see their cars sitting behind us. They were just involved in the racing that went on here at the uh, Lacrosse Speedway last weekend. <laughs> Started things off with the Lacrosse late models, and of course, uh, this could be quite the year to be in the '66 car. As Steve Carlson, as you're going to see here in a moment, put together two fantastic weeks of racing here, and uh, is now a two-time feature winner at Lacrosse this year. And it doesn't look good for the rest of the drivers for the rest of the year because Steve said that he hasn't touched that car since last year. That means he put it in the shop, didn't tear it down like most of us do, and that car is ready to go. There's no kinks to get out of it. That it, It's so ready to go, and some of the other drivers have had such tough luck getting involved in accidents, a few other things, that he's starting to build an awfully big lead. Well, of course, he told us he had some problems when he was racing uh, hard against Jay Herbst two weeks ago. No problems this week as uh, Steve Carlson wins the 25-lap feature event. What can you say about Mike Carlson? You know, everybody expects to break track records and be really fast in week number one when you've got the new tires on. We're talking week number three now, and Mike Carlson went on to set a blistering pace of 19.866. What a credit to young Mike Carlson. It is a great credit to Mike Carlson. Also, he is someone who pushes his father, and his father doesn't let him win. He doesn't give him an inch, and that's exactly what a competitive family does. They don't let somebody get involved and, and win just for the sake of winning. You make them earn it, and I think that's what's making Mike such a good young driver. Second week in a row, Mike Carlson's also finished uh, behind his father in the top three and I would expect to see that tandem do quite a few things out of the lacrosse speed with us here. Uh, heat race went to Cole Howland. Of course, he was involved in one of the uh, many snafus we had on the racetrack last weekend, and he said he had some pretty good damage. Uh, hopefully he can be able to make it back out this weekend. Ty Majeski won the 6-for-6 uh, six six dash. This 18-year-old out of Seymour, we've talked about him last week. Uh, first time he's been running this regular at lacrosse. Uh, he's only been out for Oktoberfest in the past three straight weeks he's found himself in the six for six dash and he finally wins one i think by the end of this year he may be in victory lane for a feature we got to get that young man on this show because he is just so good he's he's a young man but he's got an old soul as a driver he just doesn't hit people he does, he has a soft bumper well we're going to try to get him on the program of course he comes out of seymour races cook on on thursday nights and uh, when you run double duty like that, we're going to try to chase him down at the racetrack. The uh, sportsman feature this past weekend, he's had some problems with cars and motors over the past three or four years. Uh, finally raced his way to victory lane. That would be the Lucky Motorsports 79 of Jared Logging, as you're going to watch the last couple of laps here uh, as we show you that. Steve Bachman, 22.12, won the quick time qualifying at about 88.7 mile per hour. What can you say about Bachman this year? Last year, he qualified fastest the last four to five weeks. This year he's done it back-to-back -back weeks, got himself a feature win already. I mean, Bachman is obviously, uh, besides the damage he got last weekend, is the sportsman driver with the bullseye in his back. He definitely has a bullseye, but the reason he has a bullseye is because at the end of the year last year, 
he found a secret in his car and nobody else has figured out whatever that is that allows him to go faster. And that's what happens in racing. A legal secret we oh, don't want to mention. Definitely. And, and you can play games when you learn a secret too uh, by throwing other people off and, and having fun with that. But uh, he has found something that other people are still looking to find. Once somebody else finds out whatever it was that he found, then things will start evening up a little bit again. Jason Dummer came out for the first time this year. What a fantastic, I think that's an Impala he brought out. And, uh, man, it, not only did it look good, it ran awfully fast as he won a heat race. Uh, hopefully his uh, cousin Jamie can get his car put back together as he was involved in one of those melees uh, last Saturday. Greg Sheck winning a dash race as well. To the Thunderstocks we go. And it looks like this is going to be more of the Thunderstocks when you put the name more out there. It's either going to be Adam or Andy. And, again, it was Adam Moore winning the 14-car, 15-lap feature Saturday night. We'll share the last two of those. And as we go along, Andy Moore won a dash. Jason Bolster won a heat. Dakota Miller won one of the heat races. And just like we thought, like we've seen year after year, that batch of drivers coming out of Sparta is doing it again. Yeah, they've been doing it for so long. They're all friends. They all do their own thing, and they know how each other race. So they know when they can get aggressive and when they can't. And they just know where the finish line is at the end of the race. Had a nice batch of Hornets come out this year. Over 40 of them came out the little cross speedway. Uh, as we look at the 17-car uh, first lap feature, Mark Bornitz. I love what it says in the back of his bumper. It says, you've just been passed by a probe. Game <laughs> over. And that's exactly what happened in that first feature. Second feature, uh, 21 cars, 15 laps. What can you say? Slamming Sammy Linehan, the uh, young daughter of Dan Linehan, who's been a veteran at the raceway for many, many years. Uh, held off a hard-charging Kim Strom for about five or six laps, as you're going to see. And uh, what a way she did. Got herself in victory lane as well. Patrick Tiggy won heat race number one. Mark Bornitz won heat Steve. race number two. And uh, Jeff Thompson ended up winning heat race number three. As he's pulling double duty also. I had a problem with the sportsman. This pack we have this past weekend. When we come back, we've got three cars sitting behind us, three drivers chopping the bit to get on the show this weekend. We're going to introduce you to Kyle and Melissa and Mr. Roosh here in just a moment here at Seven Rivers Racing KQG TV. When you're all out of good ideas and you've moved on to the dumb ones, it's time. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, a higher standard of comfort. Hmm. Thank you. Mm. May I take your order? Be not defeated by indecision. Choose the path that leads to a better day. Choose the way of the meal. Make it a meal with one of Cousin Sub's new pork subs, the Memphis Steak, or the Cubano for a limited time only. The key to happiness is sharing. Oh. Cousin Sub's. Better bread, better subs, better day. Did you know that the Home and American Legion is open to the public? That's right, seven days a week you can enjoy the full service bar while watching your favorite sports team or NASCAR driver. You don't need to be a member to enjoy the Home and American Legion's rotating lunch special every Tuesday for only $6. A banquet hall with seating up to 250 people is also available for weddings, birthdays, or any other special event. See you at the Home and American Legion, 419 First Avenue West in Holman. Get ready for the Thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Racing starts at 7. Super Stocks. Modified. 600 Mods. Pure Stocks. Street Stocks. Viva. It's racing excitement, dirt track style. Tickets $12 for adults. $5, 18 and under. $8 for students. Or our family pack. $25 for two adults and three kids, 18 and under. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the Thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35, just north of Fountain City. Welcome back to Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV. I'm Dan Dyke along with Al Osu. We are filming uh, today outside one of our uh, fantastic sponsors. They've been on board since we started the program three years ago, and that would be the Home and American Legion. would recommend it to, if you want to bring the family out, they are open to the public, not one of those uh, kind of situations where it's got to be a private deal. You can come out whenever you like, and I've ate out here several times, especially during the fireworks, and a lot of good food out here. Excellent dinners. I know my wife and I will come down here uh, uh, especially during uh, uh, Corn Fest. This place yep. is just packed with people. Uh, but it, just like
like a regular bar. It's kind of a nice place to come on in, relax, uh, and enjoy a drink or two. Well, before we bring our guest on, I'm going to let you know what happened at Mississippi Thunder Speedway last weekend. They had a uh, outstanding Clark County again, and the track conditions, I understand, were just perfect. Uh, the uh, USRA B mods, 26 cars were entered wow. last Friday night. Troy Hovey not only won a heat race, he won the feature last weekend. Darren Johns guard, Jake Tim, and Sean Walski uh, picked up heat race wins. The uh, 600 mods, Brett LaDuke won the feature last weekend. Kurt Lubin and uh, Dave Banky won back-to-back uh, -back heat races. USRA modified, so Lucas Schott took home the top honors last weekend. Lance Hoffer and Brad Waits picked up heat race wins. On down the line, Pierce Stocks went to Eric Duhlman. Uh, Josh Malkeski and Paul Sweezy picked up heat race wins. First time that Paul's had his car on the racetrack this year. Street Stocks, Doug Whitecheck wrapped him up, won the heat race and the feature. Super Stock went to Jeff Brower. Jeff Brower also picked up a heat race win. And Dan Gullickson picked up a heat race win. You'll see the cars that are behind me. You're going to see them during the program today. Uh, nine years now, they've been running at the Lacrosse Speedway. They've picked up a driver here. And uh, I tell you what, if you look at their cars, you can tell that they are battle-worn and tested <laughs> and uh, have been each and every weekend at the Speedway. Steve Roosh joins me on the program, part of uh, Roosh Swenson Motorsports. Kyle Swenson joins me in the program. First and foremost, now the car that's directly behind me, that's yours. Yes, it is. Talk about why is Peter in the window? Eh, I don't know. I got it from for from Kyle, and we just stuck it in the car. And, of course, you've got Stewie on yours. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone loves Stewie on my car. Of course, if you look at Peter, you need to undo some of these. You're choking, <laughs> you're choking this guy pretty hard right here. Look at that. I don't know how I can keep a smile going on. Well, it's Peter. Oh, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> so nine years now, uh, the, the both of you have been out the lacrosse speedway. Melissa has been out there three or four or five? Oh, at least. At least about that, mm -hmm. yeah. So as we talked to you last year, I think we both had both you guys in the studio. What got you started nine years ago? I did an enduro at a October Fest, and I just said I need to do it. And now, did you guys both start racing at the same time? No, he actually, he, uh, he ran Hornets the first year, and then when he got out of Hornets through the Thundershock, he uh, was generous enough to let me borrow his car, and I ran my first year that race. So now you guys are running uh, different divisions this year, three different divisions. Uh, you're running the Hornets. Uh, of course, those that didn't know, Kyle was the 2009 skitter champ. Do you miss the skitters? I do miss the skitters awful lot. I actually... Um, Drive a little harder in the winter just to rekindle that feel than I had in the summer when the skitters <laughs> were out Wisconsin there. Wisconsin boy right there. <laughs> They've had to pull me out of the ditch once this year already. So. Ouch. <laughs> and then, uh, you, so you guys, so you're running Hornets this year. Now, yep. hopefully we may have the skitters back, not sure yet. But this year you guys have added uh, full-time outlaws. Well, it was added last year. The car is just a demon, so we nicknamed it Demon. So, And we got a motor for it now, so it'll be out there in winning races. Outlaw class is kind of, uh, for those that don't know, it's a, it's a wrong what you brung, and it, that's what it means. There are no rules, and we've seen a little bit of everything out there in the former race division. Yeah, and I think that these guys, the two of them especially, would have just so much fun out there uh, in the Outlaws division because you don't have to worry about your car setups being specific as far as ride heights go, motor sizes. Uh, uh, it's just run whatever you brung. And I think these two would have a lot of fun out with it. I do have a question for them, though. Are they, you guys going to run the figure eight? That's very interesting. I had um, I had some questions about what the track layout would be because I, I damaged my car enough during a normal race, and I, I don't want to <laughs> go out there and wreck it total. Well, I know it's going to be four. That's going to be one of the things coming up at Lacrosse Speedway this weekend is the four and six cylinders uh, coming out of the first ever figure eight race. And, of yep. course, if you have gone to Raceway Park up in Minnesota, that's a regular class that they run up there. And the uh, figure eights are going to run on the front straightaway at the Lacrosse Speedway. Not really sure what the layout's going to look like myself. I'm kind of interested to see, but we could have quite the car count. So if you do find out what the layout is, is there a possibility we'll see one or two cars out there? Well, I think that might be an option as long as, you know, the, the crew chief over there allows us to do it. Now, remember, I do have a tuner car, and that's open to a six-cylinder class. As long as we can get that car running, I'm sure that's an expendable option. Yeah. So we now a nod over here. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's crew chief and yep. Scott's at work, but that's the powers that be behind the camera here between uh, behind Roosh uh, Swenson Motorsports. You guys changed the nickname of your, your racing team from Diamond S Racing to Roosh Swenson Motorsports this year. 
Yeah, we want. We were just doing something different between Diamondus Racing picking up another driver, and it sounds a little more better when you put motorsports behind it. So we spent all winter trying to figure out what we call it. And we're going to bring on that other driver here here in a minute because I think it's interesting that we have a, a husband and wife team that races on the track, and of course, husband and wife off the racetrack, a little bit different story on the racetrack. Yeah, a little bit different. Uh, we we really haven't gotten to race too much in the Hornets, but last time we did it, I won, so. Did she let you win or did you outright beat her? I outright beat her. She'll tell you that she <laughs> let me win, but I outright beat her if you watch that video. <laughs> We're gonna get her uh, views here in a moment. Kyle, I know you're, you're one of the young drivers at the Speedway. You and I have talked about what your aspirations would be. Of course, you'd love to be running out east or down south on one of the big tracks one of these years, but the timing just isn't right. But you seem very comfortable as one of the veterans of the Hornet class at the Speedway. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I love to go out there being the Hornets, and people, like, look up to me, ask me questions, uh, how I run at the track. I mean, I don't always have the fastest car, but I do um, – put out some blistering speeds out there. You know, that's, Al, you and I have talked about that. You don't have to be the fastest driver at the speedway. It's it's what's up here that's going to win the races. That's true. People think that it's all about horsepower, and it does matter. But how your car is set up into and out of the corner. Rusty Wallace, uh, when he was dominating back in the 80s on the short tracks, made a great point. It's not the first car and the fastest car into the corner. It's the first one on the gas out of the corner, and that's all set up. That, that is all set up, and, and you'll notice on the big track especially, you can really tell who's hooked up based on how their speeds are in the corner, and that's the same thing on the short track too. These guys have to work with tire pressure. They have to work with springs and shocks just like every other racing division. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very true because we were, we were tight in the heat race, and I uh, talked to my crew chief over there and made an adjustment came out for that heat race and I was running top speed. I even blistered my tire, I was going so fast. I had to slow down to keep it, you know, working. Mm -hmm. Kyle Swenson and Steve Roosh joining us in the program. We're gonna bring the third member of the Roosh Swenson Motorsports Racing Team uh, after we take this quick break here at the Home in American Legion, one of our fine sponsors of Seven Rivers Racing. Stay tuned, we're gonna have more to come right here on the program. Did you know that the Home and American Legion is open to the public? That's right, seven days a week you can enjoy the full service bar while watching your favorite sports team or NASCAR driver. You don't need to be a member to enjoy the Home and American Legion's rotating lunch special every Tuesday for only $6. A banquet hall with seating up to 250 people is also available for weddings, birthdays, or any other special event. See you at the Home and American Legion, 419 First Avenue West in Holman. Get ready for the Thunder. The Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Your Friday night racing destination. Racing starts at 7. Super Stocks. Modified. 600 Mods. Pure Stocks. Street Stocks. Viva. It's racing excitement dirt track style. Tickets $12 for adults. $5, 18 and under. $8 for students. Or our family pack. $25 for two adults and three kids, 18 and under. Friday night racing starts at 7. Bring on the Thunder. Dirt track style at the Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Highway 35, just north of Fountain City. May I take your order? Be not defeated by indecision. Choose the path that leads to a better day. Choose the way of the meal. Make it a meal with one of Cousin Sub's new pork subs, the Memphis Steak, or the Cubano for a limited time only. The key to happiness is sharing. Oh. Cousin Sub's. Better bread, better subs, better day. We're back one more time to Seven Rivers Racing on KQED TV. I'm Dan Dyke, along with Al Losey at the uh, home of one of our sponsors, the Home and American Legion. We hope we get a chance to come out and thank them for having us here doing the program outside. And I uh, got the race cars here in the parking lot today. And while you're out, uh, grab yourself a sandwich or maybe stay for dinner. Roosh, Swenson Motorsports are against the program. We've added two more. There would be one more, but we told Scott that we didn't have enough room on our, our makeshift set, so <laughs> we just sent him home. And uh, we brought in Melissa Roosh who drives that number 23 Hornet. And we brought in Kathy Swenson, who is a Kyle's and mom and Steve's mom and the uh, ultimate crew chief at the raceway. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. Thanks a lot for having me on. It's a lot of fun to set up these cars for the kids. Thanks for coming on, Melissa. I love the bumper sticker you've got on the side of your car. You've just been passed by a girl. Do you get flack for that? No. I think you should. Well, I would think by now that most people are used to you racing at the Speedway. 
Does we only have, what do you say, maybe five or six female Hornet drivers out of 40, that, 45 yeah. on an average? Yep. So what got you interested in wanting to, to race? Um, my family actually does it. Um, my family owns a couple of late models and sportsmen, um, Paul's towing and all that. And then my older brother did it for a while, and then um, I just decided to do it, and I've been doing it since I was 16. We've got to talk about the husband-wife thing on the racetrack because you knew know well, as well as I do. I talk about the, the, the Carlsons, what it's like for dad to go against son, and you know we talk about the dumbers having the family go against each other. I love finding out you guys are husband and wife off the track for uh, but a little over a year now. Uh, got a baby in tow down there. What is it like on the racetrack? It's... Um, interesting. <laughs> Care to elaborate? Um, I don't know. <laughs> what about you? What, what, what is it? I mean, is it, is it just a competitor? Do you do the wedding rings and the nuptials are all gone? Just like, yeah, there's no love lost there. When you're coming up on your spouse, do you even notice it? Or is the adrenaline just going so much that you're just paying attention to a car in front of you? No, I notice it, especially when she gets lapped. So what happens, you know what's going to happen one of these times, one of these years, you guys are going to be running one and two for the checkered flag. What happens then? I'm going to beat them. <laughs> I'm not going to let them win this okay, time. She is a racer. <laughs> I like when they're just putting it out there. That's not, that, that, So, now, okay, now you've got Kyle as part of the family as well, and there's a chance we can get you and Kyle going head-to-head. -head. What happens in that situation? Well, last weekend we were battling it out for a good five or six right. laps or so. Um we finally got my car going and everything so I can, but most of the videos and everything, you can see me in uh, front of Kyle and Kyle's <laughs> always behind me. So um, that... <laughs> usually when we start by side by side, we say, let's team up, let's do this. And I don't know, I just lose him. I turn around and he's gone. <laughs> and oh. I don't know where he ha goes. Have you ever thought about looking through your windshield? Because that's normally where I'm at. <laughs> it's usually in the now, as the mother, do you ever have to uh, play referee instead of mother? No, they're actually pretty good, but uh, this last weekend, that's just what I wanted to see is my two team cars going, battling against each other, but uh, they did a really good job. They were battling for six in the feature, so it was really cool, and they raced each other pretty clean. Well, Robin's racing, so she hits you, you tag her back? Yeah, she. Uh, I think the first lap that we were side by side, she tagged me out of two, and I, I look, and you can see my GoPro on my Facebook. I turn and look at her, and I stare at her for a few seconds, I'm like that's how it's going to be, huh? That, that's how you want to race. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, did you see him look at you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Your response was, "Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I've been watching this happen over the past three or four or five years. Now, when do we get her in an outlaw or a thunderstock? You want to talk about Robin's race, and it's the ultimate right there with you guys. Yeah, I, to be honest, I don't think either Kyle or Melissa would be able to keep up with me if we ever did that. I think what? that's called a challenge, Al. That's I no think, fair. I think, yeah. Mine's I only a four-cylinder. <laughs> so, Kathy, what exactly, I mean, I know what you do at that track, and, and you are just so diehard each and every weekend. When he says you're the, the crew chief and you look at setting up three cars and you guys have another one back at the homestead, what do you do on a Saturday night? Um, yeah, I talk to the kids. They go out and with the setups that we put on the car, and they'll test it out and they'll let me know. Well, it's loose or it's pushing, and I'll fix it. I'll I'll play with the air pressures and see if I can get it to run on a rail so they can go out there and have fun and do what they do best. So, what got you interested in doing this? I mean, I, did you used to race? I mean, do you just follow racing enough that you knew what needed to be done? Well, actually, uh, I love racing. I followed NASCAR since I was like five years old, and they showed it on TV. My brother used to race at the Speedway, and also my cousin John Scott used to race out there as well, and he builds a lot of engines for people out there as well. So it's kind of in the family, kind of like Melissa. But no, I didn't know anything about how to set up a race car. And Stephen came to me one day, and he goes, Mom, I want to go racing. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> so we borrowed his buddy's Mustang. We rented um, from... Uh, um, where do we get the trailer from? U-Haul, yes. We rented a, tra a trailer from U-Haul, and we went out there, and we raced, and he just had a blast, and the bug kind of bit him, and so we took off from there. So I had to be a quick study and learn a lot of things, and I'd like to thank a lot of the other drivers down at the racing because they helped us out, not just uh, some of the other Hornets, but I had late models helping me, and 
and Thunder's helping me in some sportsmen's too. Now, when, when you pull into the pits, and it, this doesn't matter if it's an outlaw, Thunderstock, or one of the Hornets, do you ever second guess what she has to say? Because she's coming to you saying, all right, we need to make this adjustment with the tow or the uh, tire pressure, whatever the case may be. Do you, do you ever second guess what she says? <laughs> I never second guess what she says. I mean, this car, we haven't raced it since 2010. And I, I mean, you know as well as I do, I had eight straight weeks of bad luck with it. And that was pretty much by myself racing it. And this thing runs awesomer than ever. Does it help having another female like Kathy on the race team? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> That's called a testosterone blocker right there. And, and what about you? I mean, obviously she, she's your mom, but when you're at the racetrack, she becomes your boss. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, uh, it's more like we just work together as a race team, basically. I mean, we've came together. I'm like, I had a tire that she wants to put on there, and then there's been times I'm like, no, I really want that tire. And she's like, okay, it's your funeral. And then uh, <laughs> then there's other times from like, you know, listen to you. This will be the better tire. We'll we'll run with that one. We do have to mention Scott Swenson as well. Their father uh, couldn't be here today. He is at work, and he is down there. Uh, wholeheartedly every single weekend loading, unloading, and, and doing what it takes mm -hmm. to get these cars to run. Uh, Kyle Swenson, Kathy Swenson, Melissa Roosh, Steve Roosh, part of the Roosh Swenson Motorsports, so one of the a handful of uh, solid race teams of about three or four members that are out there religiously every Saturday night at the Lacrosse Speed. We want to thank all you guys for coming in. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. All righty. Hopefully so we much. can. Uh, and, and real, really quickly, uh, your Facebook. You threw up your videos. Yeah, I put all my videos on uh, Facebook. You can just look at me, um, Kyle Swenson. I'm trying to run uh, Twitter accounts this year so I can get up and running. That would be um, 68 Kyle Swenson at Twitter so I can do ra uh, live race chats. I don't know about doing stuff like Brad Karlowski, but I mean, at least getting you know live chats out there. Well, as long as you don't get into it with some of the track officials like Brad heads this year, you're going to be just fine. <laughs> Right. That's going to do it for the program. And again, I want to really thank the Home and American Legion for bringing us out today. They've been sponsoring the program for the past three years. And uh, we look for uh, continued success uh, and the partnership we have with Home and American Legion. For Al Osi, I'm Dan Docker. Join us next week. More recaps and more highlights and more interviews right here on Seven Rivers Racing at KQHG TV.